Hi, my name is Gunther Mers. I'm a Belgian educator. Um, I've been teaching for 20 years in two different schools. Uh, the first school is a teacher training department of My Cities University College, and I train uh, the future teachers how to use technology in the right way in uh, their classroom. And then another school, I've been teaching, uh, I've been in a distance learning project for 12 years, and we've been teaching web design to diff, uh, young adults um, half time at home and half time on a distance. I also launched a lot of global educational projects. First question, so did I spot some uh, good practices uh, where teachers have been using online learning? Yes, I did. I think it's very important as a starter that we make a distinction between synchronous and asynchronous online teaching because the synchronous teaching would be using video conferencing tools the asynchronous teaching would be like recording videos or podcasts or other media and i believe that every topic and age and even school requires a different approach so basically the teacher has to be a pedagogical engineer making that right judgment of matching the technology to his or her subject, basically. And it could be that it makes more sense to record a video with Matt and to teach online synchronous using a video conferencing tool to teach a, uh, a new language like French because you want to hear your students. The live teaching has the advantage of being able to interact. The students are able to ask questions. And you can even put the students in breakout rooms. While with the video lessons, uh, students can learn on demand. Um, they can basically learn at their own pace as well. So they can choose to pause a video and rehearse and watch the video several times, which has a lot of advantages as well. I've been doing this myself for five years in a refugee camp in which I shipped my own laptop to the Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya with 200,000 refugees and I started to teach them um, math and science with Skype and we now have a community of 425 te uh, teachers who are doing the same. We even built our own school in a refugee camp and in another uh, project, the Climate Action Project, we are having 100,000 students across 98 different countries and they record videos to share their findings about climate change and this way students globally can learn from each other so technology also allows to make learning global. The second question with John Hattie. So I think that content and pedagogy is key and the technology may replace the classroom, but not the teacher. The teacher will always have to uh, find the right learning approach to match to certain content and subjects. And what's happening right now is that people hear that Zoom is a great tool or that Screencast-O-Matic allows to record videos, etc. And then they start using the tool and then they start thinking about um, how am I going to do this? And they try to find a tutorial and that's a very wrong way to get started with online learning. What you should do is try to judge which is the best learning approach, which pedagogy am I going to instruct my students? Is this about collaborative learning? Is uh, another way the best way to go? And then they try to find out which tool gives them the best uh, ability to do that. And there's been <clears throat> a major discussion about uh, two different directions, basically. Some people claim that uh, knowledge-driven education is the way to go, like in the UK and other countries. And other people claim that problem-based learning and with more a focus on skills is very crucial. So when it comes to distance learning, all of a sudden, People start using technology and there's no issue anymore. Everybody starts instructing the students for 95%. And I'm pretty sure that um, we can do this differently as well. Third question. Um, 
yes, I came across of examples of online learning which failed because some teachers know a lot of tools which are really cool to use, but they all try to combine all those, those tools during one lesson. And that's not a good thing. I think you need to keep it simple and you need to, uh, as a teacher, use as little amount of tools as possible. And also schools have to make that decision that every teacher a student has uses the same tool and not like, for example, Google Hangout with one teacher and another one is using Zoom and another one is using Microsoft Teams. Also, it's very important to test and to, to use quizzes to know what your students remember about what you have been teaching and also send out some anonymous surveys so you know as a teacher how students feel about this this change because that's what it is you know when you start using technology all of a sudden um, maybe students don't learn as you think they are learning and also um, a lot of um, cases in which teacher try, teachers try to, to teach synchronous uh, so live when asynchronous is the better option because in some households we have three children and just one laptop and in case they all those three children have live sessions at one time that would be a disaster for them so in that case a video class would be a better option because they can learn at any time anywhere basically um, don't really know about which countries have moved to online learning um, and which one did it well um, I don't really have a good uh, overview of that one um, but basically it's um, hardly really relies on um, an internet connection and having a device. So in Belgium, um, the Minister of Education made a program in which every student who doesn't have a computer at home gets a refurbished laptop. They're doing this with Close the Gap, which is an organization, an NGO, and our main internet provider is giving internet access for free during the next months. But in other countries, and especially like African countries and India and also in Asian uh, countries, many students don't have an internet connection or no device at home and then um, remote learning or online learning is a disaster, obviously. Um, there are some solutions, there are like very e um, cheap technology like the Rachel device which makes online content offline available but I think in those cases that the teachers have to provide textbooks and paper and uh, this kind of um, materials to the students so they can still learn and then the final question um, I don't think that the role of the teacher is that different the teacher still has uh, to be there for the student um, even when the teacher is not teaching, sometimes the student, and especially the younger students, really are very eager to see their teacher, you know, just to have an informal chat with them, uh, explain what's happening. Some of the students may have lost people and their friends or, or family, and they want to speak about it. Uh, we cannot forget about this part. Um, then it's very important, again, to realize that technology replaces the classroom, but not the teacher. The teacher still has to just judge about the right pedagogy and the best way to spread knowledge to the students um, and making sure that every student is part of that uh, and not just those who have technology and bad for those who don't 